This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. And it starts again. I've got another van I'm going to build out right now. So we get them with all the shelves put in them. Um, and I end up taking them out and using the shelves. So my current van's pretty messy right now, but you get the general idea. We take out that whole shelf. I utilize the panels and then make my own uh, parts bin rack. Harbor Freight Toolbox, this guy right here. I got this stuff right here. I like these refrigerant cylinder things. We've got the window screens for the back, hook hangers, drawer unit. All that'll go inside here. So we're gonna get started on this. We got a little downtime, so try to knock this out. It'll probably be a day or two, because I'm not gonna be here all day today, just for a couple hours. All right, I took the drawers out of it, but I got my toolbox, so it just kind of gives me an idea how everything's gonna go. What I end up doing is, is using this Unistrut type channel to bolt the drawer box to, and then I use the Unistrut type channel to bolt the bottom of the drawer box. If you look right here, there's gonna be an angle bracket right there that's gonna bolt it down and it sits right over this and then I'll put one on the side of this guy too and then we'll bolt it to the back wall same thing with that So I got these strut fasteners they work perfect and what you actually do because I, I utilize a lot of the stuff that came with the van when I took it apart so these little guys right here fit perfect put the strut fitting right there slides into there and then when you turn it it locks into the strut and we'll get this one dialed in right here too and then once it locks into the strut, if I can get it in there, then uh, we'll tighten it. So I got fastener there and there into here. I got a fastener here holding it steady right there. Two fasteners in here. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, so now it's time for the toolbox. Right, we got this strut right here mounted. This is for my nitrogen tanks and stuff. So that's nice and good. This guy's bolted in. This guy's bolted in, nothing's budging. Will's working on the refrigerant tank holders right now, so we're almost there. This is gonna take me the longest making this right. rack. Got the strut up, bolted in, got the shelf right there for the parts rack on my little cases. I just need to cut the aluminum angle, bunch of those. Everything's bolted in, refrigerant racks are bolted in, nice and good. Everything's nice and sturdy. Those are for another van. I put these in this van because we hang stuff from them. So even though we don't have windows, we still put these in there because it's really good. We hang our extension cords and all that good stuff out of there. So we're just about done. I just need to get that angle, get that done, and then I can transfer over. All right, I went and I cut 16 of these angled pieces at 13 and a half inches. Actually, this one's not being used. This is my pieces, and those are going to be the angle brackets that hold the uh, parts rack or you know Stanley case holder or whatever you want to call it so I'm gonna get those riveted in now and then I also got the uh, nitrogen tank holders too to install I got my tank holders mounted that's for my two nitrogen tanks and then an extra oxy and acetylene go behind it we just use ratchet straps for that this right here I'm in the process of doing these uh, I'm not it's not perfect, okay? Um, so all I did was just figure out the distance from this case right here, and then I'm just matching it. It's not 100% perfect. Um, you know, it'll probably be a little bit off, but it works for a van. It's not that big of a deal. All right, that's it. Got everything riveted in. Good to go. Just kind of took my air blower and blew all the crap out into the street. It was just a couple little shavings. And this guy's ready to change over. I might be changing over it in the, tomorrow. It just depends on what the service call situation's like. But yeah, turned out good. I, you know, there's not a whole lot. These vans come out fitted with the racks. Essentially, what I had to do was loosen everything, shift it all the way down as far as possible, install the refrigerant tanks, shift this down as far as possible. It's all on like these speed rails up top. So that's not a hard thing. And then take the pieces of this shelf, put them together, put the angle, so that way I can slide my parts carriers. Bungees go over the back to kind of keep them from going too far. And then install this and this Harbor Freight toolbox. I'm getting there. I'm transferring everything to the new van. Um, to make things easy, I just took my drawers out of the box, put them in there. There's nothing wrong with the drawers. And then just transferred everything from the toolbox. Same thing. I'm not gonna get new cases. I'll let whoever gets my old van get new cases. I don't need those. So those go right there. Um, 
and I'm just kind of slowly moving a few things around, taking a few things out. But this is like, what am I going to do with all this crap? There's so much stuff in here that I don't need. I'm going to have to kind of go through and consolidate some stuff. <sighs> Cleaning vans is fun. This is why I avoid it as much as possible. All right, this is where we're at. Um, my front cab, I really don't do a whole lot with. I just carry a backpack that has a bunch of paperwork and books and different things in it. Yeti cooler up here, fill it with ice, all my drinks and everything. Um, just a stand right there for my phone. You could do a tablet in that too. You know where I find that has the best phone mounts is truck stops. Like literally, I just yanked all this crap off of it because I don't need the power accessories. Um, what I typically do is, is just run a little power strip right over here. You can see it right down there. Just a little power strip. And uh, that has all my chargers. I keep everything charged that way couple backpacks I'm sorry uh, jackets behind there and then down here is just chargers I always have chargers underneath my seat right there um, high-vis safety vest for the weird job sites sloppy floppy sun hat tripod so here's the back of the van pretty much you guys get the gist this is how I've always organized my vans hearing protection extra solder torches um, back behind here is where I just throw my hard hat up there I have two nitrogen bottles a spare and then I have a spare oxy and acetylene back there uh, grease gun and then zip ties and batteries now I have had this set up for a long time now so all that I did was just take the drawers out but basically keep a thermostat in there my typical Honeywell thermostat solenoid valves uh, what I typically do with these is actually there's multiple solenoid valves in here I just don't want to carry multiple boxes so I just consolidate them all into one box and there's typically a coil in there too extra capacitors acid test kit just general stuff like look I've got some super glue because you never know what you're going to use it for receptacles little things um, back down into here let's see temperature controllers time clocks don't use mechanical controls very much anymore, but I still keep a remote bulb pen. DTAV, um, KE2, this is the Wi-Fi service tool. I keep a key to therm temp control right there. Uh, Ronco's are pretty common with what I do. I keep a 111,000, which is an indoor, and a 141,000, which is the NEMA 4X. Paragon defrost clock. Extra KE2 sensors. These are the 40-foot sensors. And then also... These are uh, Kyrak Trollson sensors right here. Carry those, time delays, a little bit of everything in here. Power cords, there's a cord right there. Oftentimes when you're dealing with restaurants, if it's not an R290 and you have to use an aftermarket cord, the Home Depot appliance or tool cords are really heavy duty, but I like the right angles on the plug, so I just buy these. Boom, you can put it in any direction you want. Call it a day. Down here contactors nothing really changed with my drawers I keep a uh, dual pressure control fan cycling control and it looks like a low pressure control I should have a high pressure control in there too because I like to keep a high pressure standalone Dixel controller all the typical contactors that I use three phase I typically have the uh, the ones with lugs and the ones without lugs uh, for most of the contactors so Let's see, three, two, four, seven, four, seven. So two of those are going to have lugs. I think these two, and then this one is not. This one is not. And you can see I just kind of change it up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Couple different relays. This is like a Lennox condenser fan motor relay. I have a pretty good idea what I keep in my van. Uh, Sporlin box right here. This is dryers. There's a lot of flare dryers, a lot of sweat dryers, sight glasses. Extra expansion valve for a reach-in cooler, quarter ton, pretty common on the stuff I'm working on. Uh, Male-female sight glasses, all that. Now when it comes to my tool bags, I think I'm going to come up with a, uh, a mount on this uh, strut rail right here to put a strap so that when my bag doesn't flop over. This is the bag that I keep all my probes in. Disorganized at the moment, but it's got all my probes in there. And then we've got the new toolbox um, up here. This is my uh, True Blue evacuation hoses. And this is my press kit. So this has the Zoomlock Max jaws in it and then the water jaws in it. And then my Milwaukee M12 tool. 
250 foot hoses. I don't like collapsible hoses because they're very dangerous in the restaurants with the high temperature water. I've had too many of them explode or people pull them around a corner and cause problems. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory on my cases and the custom case thing that I made. Fuses, plumbing fittings, electrical conduit, you see it going all the way down. Uh, we have Dell field parts. I do a lot of Dell field work. So we keep a lot of the most common parts in there, dryers and different things, reach in Manitowoc ice machine parts. Um, this right here is big power tools. Um, for the most part, I don't use the big power tools very much, only occasionally. I've pretty much switched to Milwaukee for all the 12 volt stuff and that does a good majority of everything. That right there is all 12 volt stuff, whether it be you know, mini hacksaws and all kinds of stuff in there, drills, um, you can see bandsaw. I do have a few of the bigger batteries because the vacuum uses the bigger batteries. I have a blower in here that uses the bigger batteries, but for the most part, I still have a lot of my DeWalt tools. Now, you know, if one of these went bad, I would probably go ahead and replace it with the Milwaukee's, but there's nothing wrong with them. I've had them for years and years and they work great. So can't say anything bad about them. Um, this right here is amazing. That is a steel bristle brush for the reciprocating saw. I think it'll get you out of a bind. Brush your teeth with that. Um, oil pump, basic hand tools, flaring tool, carbon monoxide detectors, um, you know, thermometers, little mini fish tape, a lot of little stuff in there. MX connector or MX cable cutter. Those things are awesome. Um, just general uh, tubing benders, pipe wrenches, hole saws, torque bits, right angle drill, hammers, drill bits. This is just a toolbox I get from Harbor Freight for like 300 bucks. Just miscellaneous small stuff, stubby gauges, grinder discs, and again, more miscellaneous wrenches, pliers, different stuff like that. Now, when we come back here, um, you saw my oxyacetylene torch kit up top. I have my Heatcraft contractor kit that has Intelligen parts in it, most common components, sensors, pressure transducers, EEVs, um, EEV magnet, uh, circuit board for an Intelligen unit. I keep a lot of Intelligen parts. Uh, this is just general stuff. I have polars up here, a couple different types, refractometer for when I'm doing glycol work, uh, soldering torch, a um, couple other miscellaneous things, manometers. There's just an extra Sporlin dryer sitting right there. Up in here uh, is just a bunch of different cases. This is my uh, insulation tester or um, mega ohm meter for some people, but it's just a fluke insulation tester. Does really good, 1587. Great meter right there. Uh, one of my favorite things, I talk about it every time I do a van tour, I still say this is one of my favorite items in my van. This is the Parker Sporlin Q series um, expansion valve kit. I can make all the expansion valves that I need. Now, there's gonna be some people that say you don't need this. You don't, you can have these all separated in your van, but it's nice having them in all in one place. So I have all the expansion valves. I still keep, um, a flare valve in here, but I honestly don't use it, but I have it just for emergencies. So that is an externally equalized flare expansion valve. Um, but here's all the common ones, the VC charges, the VZ charges, that's the 448A and R22, 404, 134, really don't have much use for that anymore, but I have it just for emergencies. But I carry the main bodies, the SBQ body, which is basically right here, okay? Internally equalized. The SBQE body, I carry one of those. The EBQE body, okay, that's a straight through valve. Um, those are the main ones that I keep. So I have a BQE, SBQE, SBQ, and then EBQE body. And then you basically can just make whatever valve you need with the different cartridges right here. And then I also keep extra strainers down here, sensing bulb straps, uh, orifices or nozzles. Those are really important. Um, yeah, so this is one of my favorite things because this gets me out of a lot of binds. I have these in all my vans. Um, I believe all my technicians have them. I think one person might not, but I have another kit in the garage for them actually. So yeah, these are really important and really great things to keep in your van. Carrying on, uh, tube bender, ratcheting tube bender. And then we have 
Inficon Stratus leak detector. We have, uh, this is my swaging tool, I believe, from Navac. I have just uh, sockets and everything. I have a R290 scale right here, tap and die set, um, oil analyzer set, and then back here is a uh, Inficon Gasmate R290 leak detector. Uh, down below, the various tapes, insulation tapes, construction trash bags, motors that I keep typically. Uh, Fasco 9721s are good to have. And then I also have a Fasco 1162 and I believe an 1124. Yeah, so those are really important motors, condenser fan motors for racks and different things. Um, we come over here. Recovery machine, uh, of course, plenty of refrigeration technologies, Viper wet rag. Um, you can see a common theme in my van with refrigeration technologies products, got a lot of them. Some R290, uh, thermal imaging camera, leak detector. This right here is the Navac flaring tool, swaging bits, hole saw kit, extra oil. I try to keep everything that you know I use in my vans. As far as refrigerants go, um, I keep Let's see, I keep 448A, 404, 410A, 134, two recovery cylinders, 407C, and I think that's an R22 drum up top, yeah, because I still use R22. I keep a pop-up canopy, just a throwaway one from Walmart in the van because it's really important. Plenty of ropes down here, tag lines for when I do crane lifts, uh, nozzles for washing coils and different things. So that's the, pretty much the setup of my van. Most of that stuff back there was just in my my junk buckets that had a bunch of stuff. I got to do a mass return to Home Depot. Um, let's we're gonna test the limits of how long I can wait to return something because I got a lot of stuff over there. But yeah, that's pretty much it on my van. I mean, this is a typical van. Nothing's really changed very much from the last time that I did a van, you know, video. But I figured since I was building it out and uh, doing everything. You know, that's that's how it is. This new van has a different ladder rack, but that should be fine and not gonna be a big deal at all. Um, I gotta get a new extension ladder though, because this one right here that I have is just, I don't know if you guys can see, but the glass is just flaking off like crazy. So this thing's kind of miserable. Um, my eight foot ladder still does good. So there's nothing wrong with that one. But yeah, that is it on the van. Turns out nice, uh, so I'm gonna work tomorrow. Today is uh, January 18th, Thursday, so tomorrow I'm gonna work and then I'm off for a couple days because I'm flying out to Chicago for AHR. So if I see you there, make sure if you see me there, make sure you stop me and say hey. It's really cool when I have someone that can come help me build out the van. Uh, I had Will come and he just helped me for half a day, but it was super awesome to have him help, you know, do these little things. And it made the whole process go really smooth. You know, when it comes to these vans, we pretty much have them all with that same setup in it now. So it's kind of nice to have them all cookie cutter consistent, you know, and then that way it's just easier to know that these parts go here, these parts go there, you know, um, and it's, it makes it very convenient to have the cases and all that stuff. I thought about going like the pack out route and stuff, but that just would have changed everything. And we typically buy the vans already outfitted like they were. So we did have to get rid of one of the refrigerant racks and then that's pretty much it. Everything else was utilized. And like I mentioned in the video, I try to use all the fasteners and everything as much of the stuff that I took off you know, in assembling the van and trying to make sure that everything's nice and safe and sturdy. There's a few things that I'm like considering changing on the next one that we do, but the only like real issue I have with the van is the nitrogen tanks. Um, sometimes you get the really heavy ones that feel like they weigh a million pounds. And those are a little bit awkward to lift off of that rack when you're lifting it off. Like it's just, it takes some weird muscles and I've hurt my back doing that before. So in the future, I may look into an idea. Uh, I thought about it. Actually, I was talking with my buddy, Will, that was helping me about maybe getting a stand for that drawer unit, having a stand made where the nitrogen tanks can go underneath it. Um, I don't know, though, but you know what? Are, no, I don't think that. No, I don't think we can do that because the nitrogen tanks are supposed to be upright. So no, no. Yeah, they have to be that way. So yeah, it is what it is, but you know, we like to have them pretty cookie cutter. Uh, we drive the Chevy express vans. 
Uh, and I think we'll be we'll continue to drive those for another year or two until they stop making them. They're going to be changing to like a different model or different version. Uh, I was reading a report saying that they were going all electric, but they've backed off that and they're going to have a gas engine now. So that's a plus because there's no way an electric vehicle is going to work for a work van. The only way an electric vehicle would work for one of my work vans is if I could get 400 miles like legitimately loaded down completely loaded down if i could get 400 miles to a charge then i think it would be practical because i can't charge them at my customers sites like that's not going to work you know nobody has like legitimate fast chargers and it it's just going to be a nightmare if they do the electric thing so i'm not into the electric vehicles for the work vehicles yet nor for personal vehicles to be honest with you because the infrastructure is just not there but now that I went off on a tangent as usual, I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I say this all the time, the easiest way to support this channel is literally watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. Um, you can also go to my website, hvcrvideos.com. We have merchandise available. These hats are one. Um, and uh, you know what? I tell you what. By the time this video posts, okay, because we are having a heck of a time selling sweaters, okay, the zip up hoodies, whatever it is, what it is, I'm going to discount the zip up hoodies like ridiculously low. So um, I'm going to put them on the website for $25 each, okay, including shipping $25 for a zip up hoodie, we're going to knock them out. So as soon as I get done and click on this, I'm going to go into my website and I'm going to drop the price of the zip up hoodies to $25 because I need to clear out the inventory on those because they are taking up valuable garage space of which I could be having for hats and beanies, which sell like crazy. Even t-shirts I think do better than the zip up hoodies. So check it out. HVACRvideos.com hoodies. I'll put them on there for $25. So, um, also if you're interested in purchasing any tools, go to truetechtools.com. If you use my offer code at checkout, you can get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website. There's a few things the discount code doesn't apply to, but for the most part, you get an 8% discount on majority of the items. And when you use that discount code, I get a small commission. So that's another great way to help support the channel. You can also do so via PayPal, Patreon, and YouTube channel memberships, of which there's links in the show notes of this video. I really do appreciate you. Thank you so very much. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.